Welcome back. Well, we have Dr. Ahmad here, who is here on behalf of Harvard Eye Associates. Welcome back. It's nice to Thank see you. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. So how's it been? We haven't talked to you in a while. Yes. Things are good? Things are fantastic, yes. Good, so we're just, good. Actually, today is my six months anniversary Ooh. at Harvard <laughs> Eye, so... Super wow, excited. six months. <laughs> did you did you just kind of jump right in? I mean, they just I did, yeah, yeah. put you right to work. Yeah, so I, I had finished my training and then started right away. So Good. it's been it's been incredible. Great. Well, we're we're glad to hear things are going well. Yes. So now we're talking about all the different kind of options that we have uh, for implants, mostly lens implants yes. for cataracts. Correct. And there's there's quite a few to choose from, which I'm I'm amazed that there are so many, but it's technology and you know, tell me a little bit about why there are so many different choices. Yeah, I mean, there, there are so many options for, for so many different patients. So the, the reason there are so many options out there is because there is no perfect lens for everyone. Otherwise, everybody would be getting the perfect lens. Right. And so we sort of have to look at the technology that we have available and tailor that according to the patient's needs and mm -hmm. expectations. Okay, so when we look at when we look at the options here, monofocal and multifocal. So tell me the difference. Yeah, so the way that I always sort of approach it, I like to split it in two categories. Okay. One being the maximum quality category, and there's three lenses that fall under there. Okay. And then two being the maximum range category. And okay. so again, it's sort of this balancing act. If you're if you're gonna opt for more quality, you're gonna give up some range. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna opt for more range, you're giving up some quality of the vision. We're going to go a little bit in depth into each of these lenses here. Okay, so let's just jump right in then because I'm sure by you seeing what they are, you'll know Correct. the difference between yes. them. Okay, so monofocal lens. Yeah, so this is the traditional lens that's covered by insurance. This is a great lens that's going to give you good vision, but you're going to need glasses for, for all ranges oh, of vision, so for right. distance, intermediate, and for near vision. Okay. So it's, for, it's good for somebody who is okay wearing glasses, has been used to wearing glasses, and sort of just wants the traditional basic cataract surgery. Okay, all right. And then the next one you have is a toric lens. The toric lens, so toric, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, is just a fancy word for astigmatism correction. Oh. And astigmatism is when your cornea is shaped more like a football than mm -hmm. a basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and it can result in some, some blurred vision, loss of clarity. It can result in some lights being elongated. And so when we do cataracts on these patients, uh, cataract surgery, it gives us the opportunity to correct that astigmatism. Okay. And so this is a good lens that's going to give you good distance vision without need for glasses. Okay. And then you'll just need reading glasses or cheaters for up-close work. Okay. All right. And then uh, you've got the light adjustable lens. The light adjustable lens is quickly becoming one of my favorite lenses, and it's mainly because I see how happy the patients who are getting it are. Yeah. And so unlike any of the other lenses that we're gonna talk about today, the light adjustable lens is the only lens on the market that we can actually change the prescription of that lens after it's been implanted in, in, during the cataract surgery. Hmm. And so let's say after surgery, two weeks out, we see that you have a little bit of residual prescription left. We can actually dial that prescription into the lens without having to go back in the eye. And so mm -hmm. we do that by utilizing the UV technology mm -hmm. that's built into it. So it's a very nice option for patients who are looking to get the maximum accuracy yes. uh, and are sort of looking to fine tune the vision according to exactly what, they're, what they like. Okay. Good candidates for, the, for that type of lens is anybody who, again, wants the best chance at getting their, their desired visual outcome. It's also really good for patients who've had a history of LASIK because oh. once, once you've had work done on your cornea, such as LASIK or PRK, you've sort of altered the anatomy there where mm. our measurements that we take to know which lens to put in the eye are a little bit less accurate. And so with the light adjustable lens, you're mitigating some of that margin of error. Mm -hmm. And so you're giving that patient a higher chance of getting exactly what they're looking for. And you mentioned that uh, insurance covers the first one, which was the monofocal lens. Correct. So does insurance participate in a torque or the light adjusting? They do not. So mm. beyond the traditional basic lens, that's sort of, they kick that to the patient. I see. They consider okay. it more of a cosmetic experience. Oh, okay, interesting. All right. Now, we'll go to the other side, which has the multifocal lens. Correct. So this is traditionally what patients hear as the Cadillac lens. So this <laughs> is sort of the, the top of the line lens. This lens is going to give you good distance, intermediate, and near vision, 
But like I mentioned, there is no perfect lens out there. So I always tell my patients, you're going to have glare. You're going to have some halos. And so patients do really well with this lens. They, they know that there's going to be some halos and glare around lights. Uh, and to get a little bit more range without need for glasses, they're OK giving up a little bit of the quality of the vision to achieve that. Oh, okay. So it, it's good for patients who are really looking to minimize their need for glasses, but are OK tolerating some change in the quality of the vision. Insurance or no? No insurance. For so this only one. insurance on the first one. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Yep. Well, they need to get on board. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and other pay for countries, some of it's these a little things. different. Yeah, yeah. Well, how interesting. So yeah. in other countries, they pay for the multifocal. There are some countries that, no, regardless of the lens that you choose, they'll cover it. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's. <laughs> I mean, you know what? We're all getting older, and and the population of older people yeah. is is growing. Yeah, it is. So hopefully we can get on to those uh, insurance companies. Absolutely. You need to start covering more. <laughs> you need to cover more. All right. Extended depth of focus lens. Yeah, so this is very similar to the multifocal lens mm -hmm. uh, in that it gives you a little bit of an extended range. So with this lens, you're gonna get good distance vision and intermediate vision, intermediate being computer distance. Oh, okay. Um, but for near work, like your cell phone or reading a menu, you'll need glasses. The reason why somebody would choose this lens over the multifocal lens is there's, a, there's less risk of having glare and halos. I see. So you sort of minimize that risk, get a little bit more range, mm -hmm. knowing that you'll just need to wear cheaters for up close yeah. work. Yeah, okay. And then a small aperture, is that IOL? Correct, so okay. this is actually the latest lens to hit the market. Uh, so we're sort of just implanting it right now and seeing good results. Uh, Dr. H actually just put the, the first one in the other day. Did he? Okay. Uh, so we're really excited about that. All right. and this lens is designed to give you a wide range of vision. So it's going to give you your distance, intermediate, and near vision. Mm -hmm. But it's designed so that it's implanted only in one eye for now. We're looking at implanting oh. it possibly bilaterally. Uh -huh. um, but it's really good for patients who have irregular corneas. So somebody who's had prior uh, RK, radial keratotomy. Uh, this is a fantastic option. And okay. so the literature so far and, and what we've heard from the manufacturer is really good results. So we're excited to be able to have this in our, our, our momentarium. Where, weren't you guys part of a study? Was it for we, that? We were, yeah. Okay, Dr. that's H what I thought. Part of it. Yeah, because I think he was talking about that the last time he was here. So when it comes to choosing which lens, you know, is the right one yeah. for one individual, what are some of the things that you um, talk to them about? I get this question all the time. And it, you know, it really is so individualized. So for personally for myself, I'm really type A. I'm <laughs> looking for getting the highest quality vision, uh, and I'm okay with wearing with re reading glasses. And so for me, to maximize the quality of the vision and maximize the accuracy of mm -hmm. the technology that we're utilizing, mm -hmm. I would personally choose the light adjustable because yeah. I've seen it work really well in a lot of patients and it would be the same lens that I would choose for my own family members. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that kind of covers the gamut of what most people might need. Correct, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So again, with the light adjustable lens, it's gonna give you that, that really great quality vision mm -hmm. with the ability to adjust for any discrepancies that you may want. How often does someone have to come in and have uh, adjustments or reviews? Great, great question. So generally, we like to wait two weeks after the surgery, and then we, we check your prescription in the clinic, and if there's any residual prescription at that point, we're able to dial it into the lens. We can actually do three adjustments. Mm -hmm. So the whole process takes about four to six weeks before you get your final vision. All right, and then um, how long before an, uh, um, a lens like this uh, before it has to be changed out, or does it last forever? Or? These lenses, once we implant them, we generally want to keep them in there unless oh. there's a really pressing reason to remove them. Okay. Uh, but generally, once you've had the lens implanted, we want it to stay in there, so one okay. and done. So it's, it's highly unlikely that somebody would have to have it taken out because it was rejected? Cor no, there's, we don't see rejection with, oh, okay. with these products. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, if we're doing a lens exchange, there's a reason for it. So either the patient's really intolerant to some glare or halos, or the lens is dislocated for whatever reason, mm -hmm. which these are very rare situations, and, okay. and generally we don't, we don't do that type of surgery. Okay, all right, perfect. Well, thank you so much. It was nice to yes, see you again. Yes, it's great and, to be uh, back. All right, well, congratulations on your six thank months. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> it. All right. If you want more information about any of the lenses that we have discussed, or you just want to know a little bit more about the doctors at Harvard Eye Associates, you can go to their website, harvardeye.com, or call them at 949-951-2020. We'll be right back.